Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to episode number 9 of our Let's Play of Suzerain, a choose-your-own-adventure role-playing style game uh, set in a fictional universe. We are a fictional monarchy of the Kingdom of Rizia, and in the latest episode, uh, Pals, our neighbor, a grand duchy on our southern border, has made a claim against a massive natural gas field which was found off the coast of both of our nations. They've claimed it all for themselves. We turned down some heavy-handed diplomacy from a regional sort of capitalistic power called Lesbia, and we are now blockading the field with our navy, preventing anyone from being able to actually take the field yet. Uh, the Palazians tried to send a drill ship. We sent our navy to stop them. So very reminiscent of the kind of stuff that goes on in the South China Sea between the PRC and some of their neighbors. That being said, we feel justified in our case, and we have submitted the case to an international arbitration panel to determine proper ownership of the field. We don't expect to own all of it, but we do think we should get our fair share, which according to our experts should be about 50% of the field. But we'll see how that plays out in this episode uh, as the world careens toward a potential conflict. This was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel, so if you are interested in following, uh, you can go on the link to Twitch to follow us there, and you can also watch the full video on demand of all of these streams over there. But that's enough of that. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Uh, what's this? Pale sends Navy to Oris Field. Well, it's a good thing we're building our navy up. We'll get another ship next turn. Arbitration procedure. Rizian Navy asserts sovereign rights to new gas field. All eyes on South Maricopa at upcoming session. Gas field standoff? Rizia sends navy to Palazian waters. CSP deploys medium missiles in Sonsama base. Uh, okay. That doesn't sound good. I'm hoping that by sending gas to Grace, that influences the negotiations. But we'll see. Uh, decide whether to attend the session or not. Rizian People's Party leader Manus Sazon has invited the king to attend a session of the House of Delegates. He's slated to propose what he has called a landmark proposal rega regarding the worker rights of workers in Rizia. No, no, no. I know he wants to reform the monarchy and get rid of us, but I also know enough of history to know that the monarch should not be seen as the reason that something does not happen. And if we go there and we decide not to vote on the workers' rights, which will presumably hurt our budget considerably, then we will be blamed for it. I will send my Grand Vizier instead. I'm sure my daughter will not be happy about it. A new decree, workers' rights for all or something? Look at that, it costs three budget and negative two budget per turn. Dear God, that would bankrupt me. Probably a good thing I didn't go. Uh, OMEC reports decline in East Maricopa in economic integration. So is there a recession coming? What's my mother want? It was the night before my trip to Kirut for the Alliance of Nations meeting. I had just finished some last minute preparations in my study. I carefully made my way back toward the palace's residential wing. It was later than I realized. The halls were dead silent, illuminated only by weak shafts of moonlight through the windows. Grand Weisman Ignikos's quarters were on the ground floor. 
I saw a light coming out of the keyhole. Peer in? Peer into the wise men's quarters? Sure. Sal was rocking back and forth in his armchair, his eyes closed. He seemed to be mouthing a prayer. Just before the stairs was the entrance to Vina's room. Through the door, I caught the faint strains of her voice. The king of eavesdropping. Oh, don't be so blue. Honestly, what were you expecting? No, I won't talk to him. He's in Kiri the next few days anyway. Yes, my love, we'll speak very soon. She is telling Manus that she loves him. No wonder she stopped showing up to politics. Fucking. Ah! Now she's going to probably play a part in overthrowing me. I knew it was coming, that bastard. I knew it. I reached the top floor. Across the hall from my bedchamber, the queen mother's door was open. I looked in. My mother was smoking on her balcony. Her back turned toward me. Good evening, mother. She looked startled for a moment, then smiled. I'm surprised you're still up. You have a long day ahead of you. All set for tomorrow? Sure. Can I ask you something about Vina? What about our princess? She told you that she's seeing someone. That isn't the sort of information a young woman <laughs> shares with her grandmother. Although, of course, I've heard the same rumors as you. I think they're more than just rumors. Then you have a relationship to approve of. Or not. She flicked a bit of ash from her cigarette off the balcony. I'll tell you this much. The last thing you want to do is forbid her from seeing him. I am the king! I would never do that. She's allowed to wh love whoever she wants. But after everything the Saisons did to you... To us? Royal marriages are a balancing act, my dear. You can never satisfy the betrothed or country, but almost never both. Almost. You were lucky for a while, Romus. That this particular match would satisfy your daughter very much. It would also put House Saison dangerously close to the throne. It is up to you whether Vina's happiness is worth that. I'd be fine if it were true love, but I'm worried he's using her. We're all using each other, in fact, aren't we? You could use the pairing to keep a close eye on the opposition, assuming Vina trusts you enough to pass along information about her paramour's family. Of course she trusts me. Or there's a, one other thing you could do. You send the princess on a nice, relaxing trip abroad. Nothing cures lovesickness like a change of scenery. She's been cramping on my style in the council. A diplomatic mission, perhaps. Distract Vina and improve our international standing in one go? And if she meets someone dashing a foreign prince over there, consider it a bonus. Speaking of foreign affairs, are you positive you don't want to talk about tomorrow's meeting? I just want to make sure you're prepared to address the elephant in the chamber. Which elephant? There's so many. A wonder that your world leaders can squeeze in amongst all those... Psychoderms? But I was referring to Zill. Or have you forgotten that handover deadline is imminent? We need our land back, no matter what kind of announcement Victor Smolak has up his sleeve. How do you know he's going to make an announcement? My whisper networks aren't what they used to be, but wives still talk. Any advice on how to act? I say don't stoop to his level. Make him look like the tyrant he is. 
Speaking of which, how is that bird of a prey on your council proceeding with her investigation? Don't call Lucidia that. I meant it as a term of affection. She's got a beautiful beak. I hope she hasn't inherited her family's unhealthy obsession with pails. She mustn't distract herself from our real problems. Pails is a real problem, Mother. The situation there could easily spiral out of control. Pails is not ours to control in the first place. Zill, on the other hand, she stubbed her cigarette out on the balcony railing inside. Well, it's about time I got some rest. I hope Pabble ironed your pillowcases. You can't go addressing an A.N. with creases on your face. Thank you for all your advice. What's a mother for? I wished her good night and left the room. I heard her light click off. I returned to my quarters to see Titus take his post outside my door. I wonder how long he'd been shadowing me for. In my room, Pabble had already packed my suitcase and turned the bed down. I climbed into bed, but was too distracted by the thought of the day to sleep. There's a significant reduction in trade from Grace Nations. Recent reports indicate a troubling decrease in trade volume with Grace, a key economic organization. This downturn is impacting the treasury, treasury necessitating immediate and effective responses. Options include renegotiating trade agreements, exploring alternative trade partners, or investi investing on, in domestic industries to reduce reliance. Uh, fudge. That sucks. Rumberg tries to reassure Grace members, assuring that recent dis decrease in trade volume is temporary and the member states of the organization should not worry about. Request for cooperation from Valen. Option to share information with Valen Intelligence. That seems like a big deal. Valen's intelligence forces have asked for our full cooperation in their investigation of the Zill bombing. This means that Rizian security will be obliged to share any information they have found and vice versa. Uh... If I don't cooperate, I'm guessing that Valen will use that at the, at the council. So I'm, I think we should cooperate because when we go to the AN, if they're like, see, they're not even sharing intelligence. And if it does come up that her intelligence says that Valen was guilty, then I don't know that telling them that we know that hurts anything, so cooperate. Surplus from wine exports boosts treasury. Yay! Woo! Rizia's vineyards are flourishing with heavy demand from a remarkable surge in wine exports, particularly to Swordland and other East Maricopan nations. This unexpected boon has created a significant surplus in trade, po trade, positively impacting our national budget. Our strategic decision now is how to best allocate the additional resources. Rizia's viv viticulture will travel around the world. Who do the, who do the heck is who do the heck is even Geralt of Ribery? What? What are these decisions? Yay for the budget increase. Although it doesn't look like the budget went up. Oh. Will it go up next turn? I'm confused why the trade decrease hit immediately. But the wine didn't? It's kind of confusing. Wayland thanks us for cooperation. Mm. 
Swordish tourists disrupt ancient Topaz site. Of course they would. Blessing our burden. Rizzi's wine export reach new heights. I would think we should have more budget next turn from the wine exports. I don't fully understand why that event didn't hit. Like, why isn't it showing that it'll go up? Grace condemns trade deadline decline. Grace is concerned with the recent downturn in trade with the Kingdom of Rizia. We are actively seeking to identify the causes of this decline and are dedicated to implementing measures to rectify the situation. Our aim is to restore elevated trade relations with Rizia, reinforcing our commitment to economic cooperation and success. I am assuming that someone is like covert, covertly refusing to trade with us due to the Pales dispute, I would guess. I'm assuming the turn will end after the meeting at the Republic of Kirut. I do wonder if we should spend the money now. We've got four. Nobody wants to do the public rail transportation. So this costs energy, and I don't have a lot of energy to spare. Depending, especially depending on what happens with this mine. Workers' rights. Everyone will be mad at me. Well, not everyone, but... So if I could ensure that the wine would come in and increase the budget per turn by two, then we could do this, and this would make the people happy. One-time budget for investing in health wouldn't be a terrible idea. Sell a little bit of energy. Gives me five gold now. What can we do with that? Buy military ships from international market. Two battleships! That's tempting. Um, the hydroelectric dam that takes four turns I feel like we probably missed the boat on that already industrial park Um, this will give me one energy per turn. It'll only cost two put budget. Go for energy. So wait, this costs two. And how long does it take? Two turns? Thanks for the follow.
Four turns is a long time for the hydroelectric dam. Like, do we even have four turns before we'll need it? Because we're already on turn... What turn are we on? We're on turn four. So, I get the sense it's too late probably for the hydro project. The coal mine development takes two turns, so that might help, plus one energy per turn. We also have the other gas field coming online tomorrow, so that'll be two more energy. What's the Air Force Base do? We were told that the reason we lost the last war is the Air Force, so we're going to build the Air Force thing. Wait. I don't have the authority? I do have one authority. Why does it say I don't have the authority? I have... I have authority to spare. How does that make any sense? Coal mine development. You have authority, so why... One authority. I've got that. And I've got the budget. That's annoying. Okay. I'd build the gold mine, but I'm worried about the impact on the wine industry. Maybe we just sit on the money, it doesn't go away. What's the one that's available? The new thing? Maybe we should be buying global energy. If you're all saying energy is going to be an issue. Alright, we're probably going to get sanctioned or something, I'm guessing. Let's see what happens. It was a rainy day in Kiryut, one of only a handful the island experienced per year. The sound of falling drops on the Alliance of Nations dome made for an unexpectedly soothing backdrop of what I could tell was going to be a tense session. I sat with Lorento and the rest of the Rizian delegation in the half-filled assembly hall. Today's session was to focus on South Maricopa only. Looking around the room, I could see representatives and leaders from Valen, Morelia, Jaredia, and Lespia. Duke Axel Reinhardt and Patricio Alvarez entered late, deep in conversation. They nodded at each, at each other and took seats with their respective delegations. Did I make a mistake? Are we going to lose the arbitration case? I believe we can win, especially if we make a good argument today. Are you well, your majesty? Your father always had a case of nerves before these sessions. I'm fine, Mr. Escobel. I appreciate your concern. We turned our attention to the room as the President Nines called the meeting to order. The meeting This was a special session, so the opening remarks were kept short. Before I knew it, it was time for individual leaders of South Maricopa to present their speeches. Prime Minister Alma Sultana strode up to the podium. She had lowered to the microphone to reach it. Big trouble in a small bag.
Aurelian leader greeted the assembly. Her voice had a me me melodic lilt to it that I associated with Quinnall. Mr. President, esteemed leaders and distinguished guests, it is my honor to speak to these hallowed halls for the first time. I come before you as a representative of New Morelia, a country committed to breaking free from the shackles of our repressive past, a country that is now truly aligned with the AN values of justice, solidarity, and human dignity, and one that is proud to build bridges with those who share our vision of a more equal society. She nodded toward the upper seats of the assembly room. I looked behind me to see Vagslandian Chancellor Emmerich Hegel applauding fiercely. I thought this was a South Maricopa session. Chancellor Hegel is not on the speaking program. He must have flown to Kyriut solely to support Madam Prime Minister. It is a time of transition for Moralia. But as we redefine our principles and our partnerships, one fact becomes abundantly clear. We can no longer abide the senseless exploitation of our land, people, and resources. She hasn't taken her eye off the topic since her election. For too long, our so-called partners in the Meftium International Trade Zone have dug the ground out from under us. We've allowed them to ravage our soil, abuse our workers, while reaping more than their fair share of the profits. They send security forces to guard their gold, yet leave the rest of Morelia to the mer mercy of Dardian Terrace. Meanwhile, the shocking lack of mining regulations in countries such as Rizia shows they are less, no less careless at home than abroad. I didn't give in to Rusty, I just didn't sign a rule. Why is she naming us? Morella's international profile isn't large enough to go after a country of Lesbos stature yet. Morella calls on the Alliance of Nations to recognize our human rights struggle and accept that if Meftian FITZ is to continue, any wealth it generates must be reinvested in the Morellian people. Okay. As fellow stewards of the international trade zone and fellow soldiers in the fight against imperialism, the nation of Vag's land supports Morelia and its journey. Not until Morelia improves its military. Hegel sat back down. Nyan's motion of a prime minister to continue. I thank all of you for your attention today and look forward to forging a brighter future for the people of South Maricopa. All of them. Lorento turned to me as the Morellian Prime Minister wrapped up her speech and returned to her seat. It seems that the trade zone is going to be more of a sticking point than I thought. Supreme Weizmann Jorgar Amel stepped to the stage dressed in a ceremonial robe with a silver trim. Before speaking, he waved his hand in the air six times, representing the six pillars of Golcondalism. I'm surprised he flew out here. Dirty as Supreme Weizmann normally refrains from such speaking in public. The Supreme Weizmann spoke in a deep baritone. Dear great people and powerful leaders of South Maricopa, in the name of the Prophet of Verk, I salute you all. I am humble enough to know that we men alone cannot decide the fate of a continent, not without God, God's guidance, and it is God who has guided me here today. We are one of the few nations brave enough to let themselves be ruled by his law, but we are also a country, like any other. Yet our attempt to find common ground with our neighbors has been rebuffed, over and over solely on account of our beliefs. I looked over where Alma Sultana was sitting. She was openly scowling. The Prime Minister of Morelia accuses us of violating her borders, yet it was not so long ago that we were one country. Because of arbitrary lines that have been drawn, my people can no longer visit the graves of their ancestors or the shrines where they once worshipped. Every single one of us, Derdia, Morelia, Rizia, Valen, we all have different views, yet we are all united by the divine path of St. Verk. And it is my humble request that we Derdians be able to follow that path 
we as we have for centuries. On that note, concerns have been raised about the missile tests in my country. Our aim has only ever been to protect our people and our way of life. It is God's will that we use this technology not for evil, but to contribute to global security and stability. God wants missiles? That's priceless. That isn't funny, it's scary. What's scary is if he finds the wrong buyer for this technology. Amazol puts his hands on the podium. How far have we... F is this nuclear Gandhi? <laughs> I don't think so, but... How far have we fallen that not only the country in South Maricopa, where the pillars of Nerti stand tall, is treated as a laughingstock? You all speak of superpowers, but I know there is only one superpower we need to worry about. He pointed upward. The sooner our nations come together under him, the sooner true peace and prosperity can be realized. Supreme Wiseman Ayansmel made the pillar sign again as he exited the stage. I don't know what... I'm guessing this is... Well, whatever. Oh, but now it is time for the real heavy artillery. He gestured to an aide to begin taking notes as President Nines announced Victor Smolak. There were some whispers from within the room as Valen's president stepped up to the podium. He silenced them with a theatrical shushing motion and then continued. Dear fellow leaders, I wish I could say I was happy to be here, standing as one of the six proud nations of South Maricopa. And yet I feel only sorrow. Sorrow that our magnificent region has let itself been torn apart by forces greater than ourselves. I speak, of course, of Arcasia and Rumberg. Valen alienates every country around him and then blames the superpowers. What nerve. Convinced of the idea that might makes right, they sow discord amongst us in order to strengthen themselves. And Valen, poor war-torn Valen, must pay the highest price. Who among you can deny ATO involvement in the Valen Civil War? Or Rumberg's shipping of arms to bluish separatist movements? It is to my everlasting regret that when Valen was at its weakest, our direct neighbors opted for an alliance with a nation that has sought to harm us at every turn. I do not blame the great kingdom of Rizia for its decision, but neither can I ignore that for the past 20 years, Rumberg has maintained a presence to both our northern and south. In light of that, the Rizian government's failure to denounce the perpetrators of the Zil bombing, the most heinous terrorist attack to occur in Valen since the Civil War, concerns me greatly. If the worst civil war, if the worst attack that occurred in your civ your country since the civil war was the death of three people when you're clearly a military dictatorship that has been like exterminating people, I find that hard to believe. What's to stop such violence from reoccurring? What will happen to the Vesics who have made Zil their home once Rizia and by proxy Rumberg regain control of the region? I, a man who respects the rule of law, yet I cannot put my country's people at risk by abandoning the territory while these questions still hang in the air. Here it comes. This is why I have decided to invoke the AN Threat Mitigation Protocol for Treaty Obligations to delay the return of Zill until that risk is neutralized. This is unprecedented, Your Majesty. No nation has invoked this protocol since the signing of the AN Charter nearly a century ago. The murmurs in the room were growing louder. President Nines banged a gavel for silence. It is not my intention to keep custody of Z the Zill region forever. The sooner the safety and security are restored, the sooner we may begin preparing for an orderly transition. I hope for swift cooperation from His Majesty Romus and my fellow South Maricopan nations. Together we are strong. None came. Uh, what do I do now? Man, Lorento, you just really believe everything can be solved. Just happy hunky-dory. Mr. President? May I just start by voicing my unwavering support for this fine organization and the role it plays. 
Were it not for the Alliance of Nations, there would be no way to stop our country's petty quarrels from devouring the world. Which, ladies and gentlemen, is precisely what's in danger of happening today. The nation of Lespa is deeply concerned about the deployment of Rizian naval forces around the Oris gas field in the Antasian Sea. The use of military force to occupy a disputed territory goes directly against the AN's most cherished principles. It is essential that Rizia respects the legal process and accept the results of arbitration, whatever they may be. Such blatant use of intimidation tactics show that the kingdom has no intention of doing so. We stand ready to aid in the peaceful settlement of this dispute, and we beg the AN not to let Rizia's show of force affect us, its judgment. For our part, it's clear that due to the small size and limited habitability of the Rizian island of Kalkabiz, the Grand Duchy of Pales has a greater claim to the field than the Kingdom of Rizia. I don't see the point, but if you like... Malarkey! <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Hagel. Forgive my ill-timed comment. Cough. I have a terrible cold today. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so much for cooperating in the investigation. I do wonder, though, Silly Putty, if we hadn't cooperated in the investigation, if that would have been something that Valen used against us in that speech, and if that would have maybe resulted in more people supporting him, possibly. I suppose we should express gratitude, right? If we say nothing, then maybe he won't support us further. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. He gave me a significant look and then sat back in his chair. That brings me to another point I was going to make today. I speak, of course, of the conspiracy to nationalize the Meftian International Trade Zone. Chancellor stood up again. Alvarez ignored him. Let us not forget for one second that Morelia is acting out of its own accord. The long arm of Contanian Security Pact is behind this. By giving in to Prime Minister Sultana's demands, the nations of Lesbia and Rizia would be effectively paying to increase United Kankana's sphere of influence. I know I am not alone in wanting to avoid those disastrous consequences. He looked at the Palazian delegation. Reinhardt and his ministers politely applauded. I will remind Morelia and Vagsland that the Alliance of Nations is watching, as is ATO. Any attempt to seize the international trade zone by unlawful means will be met with retaliation. That will be all. Vagsland's certainly an active participant today. Either that or Hegel really does have a cold. Looks like Pales is next. Duke Reinhardt stepped up to the podium. With a spotlight on the Palazian leader, I could see that he had, a had stubble on his chin and dark circles around his eyes. Duke Reinhardt cleared his throat and shuffled a few papers around. As the leader of the youngest nation in southern Maricopa, I am humbled to be in this great hall. I am fully aware that everyone else in this room has spent their lives preparing to be in power, whereas me... Let's just say that calling me a dilettante would be generous. He's joking, but it's true. I wonder what he's getting at. He's obviously trying to use his charm to win the, win the vote. But just because I am inexperienced does not mean I am naive. The Kingdom of Rizzi has deployed a naval fleet to the waters of my Grand Duchy, supposedly in self-defense. And yet we know what happened the last time Rizia sent military units to Pales. I believe that the coronation of His Majesty King Romus heralded a fresh start for our two nations, but I believed wrong. The incident in Valen has proven the lengths to which this disastrous new monarch would go. In this context, it is vital that my emerging nation assert its sovereignty. We hope the Alliance of Nation Arbitration Committee sees through the Kingdom's poorly justified infringement on our maritime borders and we invite other colleagues in this esteemed organization to engage with us as equals, irrespective of the way our neighbor has treated us. Good, Your Majesty. Don't play the aggressor. Rest assured that we will resist any further attempts to bully us into submission, and forevermore. Criminal! 
<laughs> that didn't sound like a cough, Chancellor. No, no, I cannot stay silent while you make entitled demands. Your family used pales as a base to pillage the Xenian continent. Everything you had, you stole from someone else. And rather than give it back when the revolution forced your hand, you begged the capitalist swine of Lesbia to help you hold on to your ill-gotten gains. I, I, I beg your pardon, Chancellor Hegel, but I am not responsible for my family's sins. But you are happy to profit from them, are you not? Up there in your glass castle, I tell you, Duke Reinhardt, the cracks are beginning to show. <laughs> Damn! Reinhardt just got Hegel! <laughs> uh, I don't want to say, I'm not going to applaud Hegel. Because they're obviously going to nationalize and take our gold. But that is freaking amazing. <laughs> so it appears, Your Majesty. President Nines, this man is abusing his guest privileges. Can he be removed? After a short back and forth, President Nines issued the Chancellor a stern warning. He glared out from his seat as Duke Reinhardt finished his speech. I, uh, I see the Chancellor is still rest resentful that the people of Pales chose the firm leadership of the Reinhardt family over the chaotic revolution. Yes, the Grand Duchy aided the colonists' aims of the Valgos Empire, but like Vagsland, we are ready to put that past behind us and look toward the future. We simply have a different vision. Pales may not have truly earned its spot in this assembly, but it is my hope that it will. His voice regained its full confidence now. And any nation that attempts to stop us from doing so will be met with strong and resolute responses. He rushed back to a seat as chatter erupted from the rest of the assembly. It's certainly been an eventful session, Your Majesty. I hope you're ready for your speech. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. One or three, I would guess. Most respected leaders, is that more respectful than number one? Esteemed fellow members? Which one is more respectful? I don't know! I guess most respected leaders of South Maricopa? I don't know. Um... My monarchical forebears instilled in me a great respect for this institution and its values. As we have seen over and over throughout history, our nations can accomplish much more together than we can apart. Which is why I'm so saddened by the division plaguing South Maricopa. I'm aware that the comments made by President Victor Smolox earlier in today's session demand a response from me. I hope you all see Valen's failure to return Zill for what it is, a flagrant, declar er, flagrant violation of international law. The bombing was a tragedy. 
However, my kingdom has taken the necessary steps to ensure it will not be repeated. Valen's willingness to disregard the terms of a legal document has chilling implications for its relations with the rest of the continent. We're not fighting for a sliver of Rizia, we are fighting for the future of South Maricopa. I, can I do one and two? Wiseman doesn't have, I don't think, the support of the rest of the folks, and Cantana has shown support for us in this meeting, so... I would assume one would probably be the safer route to go. I don't want to ally with Cantana, but... It does seem like their interests and ours align at the moment. Obviously, there's the whole gold thing, but... That can be discussed later. Prime Minister Sultana, in light of the human rights violations Valen has committed, Morella surely cannot stay silent. Do we really want to put them on the spot here? I call on the rest of you to choose a side. History may rest on this outcome. What else do I s I'm not yet finished? Uh, the problem with saying I'm not yet finished, I don't know what comes next. So I guess it's safer to move on. I cannot ignore the presence of Chancellor Hagel and his newfound interest in our neighbor. Oh, I don't want to criticize him. Am I going to become a Marxist if I choose one? None of these options seem good. Two kind of butters up our, our neighbor, which might actually be better. Given the ongoing exploitation happening in Morelia, I am not surprised that Prime Minister Sultana looked e to the east for assistance. No, one is probably better. One... I may not share Morelia's worldview, yet I believe our citizens' struggles are one and the same. As Morella's longtime allies, we are prepared to offer what assistance we can in building a more equitable midst. I don't know that this commits us to anything, but it does risk our future budget. Number one is just outright... This is like outright kill your budget. This is... I think this is better. Two is better. As Morelia's longtime allies, we are prepared to offer what assistance we can in building a more equitable midst.
three kind of kicks the can down the road, right? I'm not going to I'm not going to say one. One is too much of a hit. Then again, two doesn't, you know, I'm not opposed to reopening trade no zone negotiations as long as Rosia continues to be able to provide for its citizens. Like that's still two and three leave us a way out. So I think two is the middle ground, I guess. Are we just... The problem with this is, like, if I go with three, it feels like we're trying to have our cake and eat it, too, right? Like, when you try to please everyone in these games, you usually don't please anyone. <laughs> That's my concern, is I don't want to, like, piss everyone off by trying to please everyone. Obviously not one. The division of the former empire of Mor Moridia has pitted brother against brother. The violence must end. Finally, a word regarding pals. Despite the Duke's claim, Rizia is not the aggressor in this situation. Pale sent a drill ship to the disputed territory. Our response should not come as a surprise. I'm convinced that a peaceful compromise can be reached with the help of the AM. As a signee of the AN Directive on Offshore Resources, we have a right to the undersea grass within 200 kilometers from our coast, no matter which coast. Should we go with four? I don't know if we would have discovered this. This is like the intelligence we uncovered. So four is kind of like proof that, hey, they're manipulating the situation, right? And I think this one only came up because it was we gave our uh, defense person the ability to do the intelligence work. Our intelligence services submitted concrete proof of Pale's cooperation with lesbian energy executives. Their lack of transparency should concern us all. We're counting on the arbitrators to make the right decision here. Yeah. 
Of course, I sincerely hope we won't be forced to use the fleet that's deployed to the field. If Rizia does gain control of valuable resources, I promise all of South Maricopa will benefit. Praising Chancellor Hagel. Hmm. Um. I just feel like we've gone way too far in, in like, budding up to Hagel, especially since Rumberg are not... Rumberg's not good friends with them, right? So I don't... I don't know. We want to take full control. We want to take to share, not take full control. I don't want control of both. That's the thing. Is like, I wish I could choose a different option here. I was inspired by your courage in confronting lesbian and Palasian delegations today. Oh man. I shouldn't have chosen that one. I don't want to go down the, the United Cantana route. And that may get the other folks in my parliament to be like, let's overthrow you for being a commie. But it too is just blatantly hostile. I would not presume to ask for Vagsland's support, but you have my respect. President Neens motioned to the clock. My speech had gone over its runtime. Do not rush a king, Mr. President. <laughs> I will conclude with these words. We did say our political approach was following a third way when we did our initial, you know, our initial who we are and what direction we wanted to bring the kingdom. We could choose to, at, at the beginning, it was like, do we envision getting closer to the east, to the west, or a third way? And we chose a third way. So I'm going to go with number one. It also gives the other actors in the room more agency. President Smolik was wrong. It is not the superpowers who are tearing us apart. We are doing that to ourselves. I hold out hope that we may find our way back to each other. Thank you. Well done, Your Majesty. It'll take a while to digest the ramifications. Let's update on all of this once we're back in Rizia. It didn't tell us if anyone clapped or booed or whatever. <laughs> there was no... Did it... <laughs> all right, everybody. That's going to do it for this episode of Suzerain. We've been going for almost an hour, so we'll wrap this up after that major conference speech, and we'll see how things play out in the next episode. Until then, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.